So in this demo, we are going to check how to deploy Cloudera CDH 5.4 on Windows Azure Virtual Machine or Microsoft Azure uh, Vanilla Calorie Virtual Machines. So we'll be picking up directly for this demo um, a CentOS or a rel based cluster. So CentOS right now it's being available from OpenLogic family. I'll be taking for this demo that's OpenLogic 6.5 or which is similar to CentOS 6.5 on image, a virtual machine image. And this distribution of the Linux that would be best and available to CentOS version 6.5 and it has to be provided by OpenLogic in Microsoft Azure distribution. It's from Linux family and it's being available on this following locations like in East Asia, Southeast Asia, Australia, East Australia, um, Brazil, South, North Europe, West Europe, Japan East, Japan West, and Central US West uh, and West US. So basically during provisioning of this VM, I'm going to take up basically an extra large VM that's in A9 type that's 16 cores, 112 gigs of memory. And I have been put up already the corresponding uh, private key file that's PEM file basically and this password. And also I have given up the cloud services DNS name and I have given the proper affinity group or the location where I want to put up the VM for provisioning purpose. And these are the following port numbers which needs to be open during the deployment of CDH 5.4 using Cloudera Manager 5x on Azure VM. So we need to have SSH port that needs to be opened with protocol TCP. We need to have the port number 7182 should be open to installation and guest uh, in order to get the uh, guest heard bit agents from Cloudera. We need to have the port number 8888 to be open due to its a port number of you. We need to have open the port number 7180 to be open because it's a port number of Cloudera Manager. We need to to have the port number 9000 and 9001 that should be also needs to be opened and once we have done this corresponding settings the next thing is basically to go get up and uh, just provision this VM So it will take a bit of while while it will be provisioning this VM. Once a VM would start provisioning, then we need to do the few things first, which is basically as a prerequisites for the deployment of CDH. So let's first move ahead with the provisioning of this VM first, and then we would be provisioning the rest of the prerequisite steps. Now, once you have finished the provisioning of the VM, the next step is there are pre few prerequisites are there. So that prerequisites, that's first of all that we need to disable the AC Linux that should be disabled. And before disabling AC Linux, we may try to use a sister control that's VM swappiness value set to zero. And we have to add this line within etc slash sysctl.con file to keep our change to be permanently set up uh, so that it's not being lost after rebooting the VM as well. And we need to also change the root password we need to change the host name in etc host file we need to add the corresponding port number so make sure that the ports are opened in the vm and uh, we need to also configure for password this you to user authentication so right now i'm in the core centos 6.5 server which is running on microsoft azure cloud and it's being running on an availability set and just make sure this the corresponding port numbers are open that's very specific for cloud or cdh distribution now i'm first going ahead to disable the ac linux property so what I need to do, I need to I need to disable the AC Linux configuration. And just open the SLE next file.
And here, in order to disable AC Linux, what you need to do is basically we need to make sure that AC Linux has the following three properties enforcing, permissive, and disabled. Enforcing means AC Linux security policy is enforced, is enabled. Permissive means that it would print out the warnings instead of enforcing. It would not uh, prevent you to do the work, but it would uh, being provide you the warnings. And disabled means it is being completely unloaded. So, for deployment of CDH, what you need to do, we need to disable AC Linux completely. So, I'm making it as disabled and uh, after that we need to also add uh, this following command over here ctl w pm dot happiness this value is zero and once we have done the settings we can save and exit the next thing is basically we need to change also the root password so I can log in as root and after changing my root password what I need to do next is basically I need to change the host name also in my uh, etc host file so what I could do is my host name should be Cloudera Hue and once I do this I can also check the local IP address for the VM where I'm working where I'm planning to deploy so for masternode also we need to do the same thing I can copy on that and then I need to move inside the hosts file once again and I can delete the value of local host that's 187.0.0.1 to the corresponding IP address which has been mentioned which I am being getting after typing if config rest of the things are not needed so I can discard over that and then quickly I can save and exit from here as well and also the last step is basically I need to configure for passwordless pseudo, pseudo user authentication so in order to do that what I could do I can open the vi pseudo file there I could be able to add under user aliases the value so you can quickly check over internet as well like what I am doing so far So it's pretty simple basically we need to add just a one single command like this so I can add my username is all goes to all So this is the setting I can add to configure for passwordless pseudo user authentication and once I've done with that the last step is basically to reboot the cluster.
to make the all changes to happen. So let's just wait for a few minutes to boot the. I can also make a few changes like I can add this following line cctl.conf. Here. can make the change as permanent as pm swappiness value as 10 so that if I reboot the cluster as well the value could not the settings could not be deleted save and exit the next step once I've done to with all of this it's that's to be basically I need to download the cloud or manager so what I could do I can simply download it from archive.cloudera.com I need to download the Cloudera Manager installer And once I've done this, I need to give the appropriate permission. So here in the Cloudera Manager 5 edition, I would be able to see that this installer enables you to install Cloudera Manager and bootstrap and enter CDH cluster. And it only requires that we should have SSH access to the cluster's machine. And those machines could have also the internet access. The installer could be only recommended for demonstration purpose and POC deployment. For production, we need to do for multi-node deployment, and uh, which needs to be also scale, and it may also record database migration as, as much as the cluster grows. And the Cloudera Manager is also installer. It will de also detect the operating system as a Cloudera Manager host. It will install the package repository for Cloudera Manager and GRE. It will install the GRE, and it will not, if it is not already installed, uh, we need, don't need to have to deploy any JDK or GRE version. If, it would also install and configure an embedded post uh, gray SQL databases. It would install the Cloudera Manager server. So once the server installation has been completed, we could be able to browse to Cloudera Manager's web interface and it could be able to use the cluster installation wizard. Now at this point of time, Cloudera Manager, even the latest edition, it supports the following 64-bit operating system as the uh, basic OS. Like it, uh, it supports the RHEL 5, uh, 7, or update 7 is all, or later is recommended. It's, uh, it uh, supports RHEL 6, Oracle Enterprise 5, Oracle Enterprise 6, CentOS 5, 6, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 11 uh, with a service pack 2, uh, Ubuntu 10.04, 12.04, uh, 12.04, uh, 14.04, and Debian 6. But uh, just make sure that in Debian 6 only supports a CDH4.x. So once uh, we know that the basic requirement and all, we can proceed to the next to proceed to the basic installation part. We need to accept the licenses. We need to accept the licenses for installation of J JDK and JavaFX. We accept the licenses. And it would go ahead and automatically install the Cloudera Manager repository.
Alrighty, so if uh, during this provisioning CDH we using Cloudera Manager, if you are getting any issues like Cloudera SEM server date but PID file exists like this types of issues that's going to be happen. So just make sure that uh, we need to have, we need to stop the services once again and then we need to restart uh, the services and just make sure that the old uh, Cloudera SEM server PID files is getting to be deleted. So these are the steps if any point of time we are getting these issues like Cloudera SEM server date but PID file exists. So first of all we need to stop the cloud SEM server then uh, after stopping the SEM server we need to stop the cloud SEM server databases that needs to be stopped and shut down then make sure we need to delete remove the cloud SEM server PID file once it is removed then we need to start once again freshly the cloud SEM server databases uh, so that it could be able to start it could be wake up the server create role databases activity monitors and all the stuffs and at the end uh, once all the phases for databases and uh, the server has been started, then we could be able to start the Cloud or SCM server. So that's all for now. And right now I'm able to log in through Cloud or Hue, that's in Cloud or Manager. And I need to log in with my default username and password, that's admin admin. And I can log in. Once I log in, I would be prompted to enter uh, to select the edition that whichever I want to deploy. So basically, very quickly, I could be deploy Cloud Express, which is free for right now. If I want to go with Cloud Enterprise Data Hub Edition, I can go it for uh, without license. I could go. I could be able to go ahead with 60 days. But after 60 days, it would be work function as a Cloud Express. But for the single node installation, I'm going ahead with Cloud Express where I would have um, unlimited node limit and I would have pure CDH and the core Cloud Manager features will be available over there. So I'm continuing with that. So once I choose a Cloud Free Edition, I will be able to good to go with Cloud Manager and CDH. So I'm going to use the Cloud Express 5.4.3, and it would enable me to later choose the packages for services like Apache, Hadoop, Common, HDFS, MapReduce, Yarn, HBase, Zookeeper, Uzi, Hive, Hue, Flume, Impala, Sentry, Scoop, Search, and Spark. And uh, so that's I need to continue with that. Next, I need to give the host name of my cluster. So you could give it directly to your exp expanded query. You could be able to get uh, your IP address or your host name and you could be able to search it. Once you get that, you can continue. And next, you would be prompted to the cluster installation. You need to select the appropriate repository. So you can select directly via the version of CDH. So for this demo, I'm going to install CDH 5.4.4.1. That's actual the subversions of CDH 5.4.4, PO of 4. And there are some additional parcels that are also available for Accumulo, Kafka, Keystrust Tree, Scoop Netza Connector, and Scoop Teradata Connector. So I'm good to go with that. I'm not installing any additional binaries. And next, I need to accept the licenses for JDK. That's JDK installation option. I can continue with that. I don't need to enable the single user mode deployment. So just I'm continuing with that. And the last step, uh, basically, for I need to provide the SSH login credentials. So I'm choosing basically the login as a host to the root. And uh, we may be able to connect via password or public key authentication for selected user. Authentication method, I'm choosing at all host accept the same password. And then I'm providing just basically the root password of the VM where I'm installing CDH. SSH port should be one and number of simultaneous installation for this point of time is one because if I make it large, so large numbers of installation, it would consume a huge bandwidth. Uh, so uh, that's what demo it's uh, fine to be one. Once I do this, it would go ahead and start to deploy the execution script to refresh the package metadata. It would install JDK packages and then it would go ahead and install the Cloud agent and finally to check out the heartbeat from the agent.
so it would be starting the cloud or manager agent and finally it would wait for the hard bit so once the installation completed successfully so you could always check over the details this is a successful deployment you yeah, and finally you can click on continue to proceed with the installation part so here in this step it would go ahead and uh, download the selected parcel so for this demo it would go ahead and select cdh 5.4.4.1 So once the downloading has been done, it would go ahead with the distribution. And once distribution has been completed, it would go ahead and unpack. And after unpack, it would activate uh, to proceed with the final deployment with uh, the Hadoop ecosystem packages and each and every components. So it would go over and unpack now the package.
so once it has been activated can if you are getting any issues with uh, as a system health status and activation after that uh, the continue button is being uh, not activated so you can quickly sign out and sign in once again so that you could be able to get uh, the next steps to process further like a uh, host checking details and the version summary like host name component which are going to install right now like big top tomcat for cdh5 apache crunch which is available with cdh5 flumeng mapreduce 1 hadoop hdfs httpfs hadoop kms mapreduce 2 yarn hbase uh, lady hbase indexer hive h catalog hue impala kite sdk for cdh5 only which is available then liama Mahout, Uzi, Parque, Pig, Sentry, Solar, Spark, Scoop version 2, Scoop version 1, where Zookeeper, Cloudera Manager, Management Demons, Java 6, Java 7, and Cloudera Management Agent. So once you are finalized that you are going to deploy all of this component into your cluster, so you can click on finish so that the component would start to deploy. So next, uh, just proceed with the set of phases. So here you would get the option to choose either CDH5 services that you want to install in your cluster. So I'm selecting all services since my cluster, though it is a single node, but it is enough uh, uh, resources being available like it for CPU, uh, IOs, disk, bandwidth, that's everything is being available. So I'm using right now in Microsoft Azure VM, which is an A9 configuration uh, Azure virtual machine, having around 50, uh, 16 cores CPUs and 1 to 112 gigs of RAMs and uh, more than a few, uh, uh, more than 100 TBs of uh, disk spaces. So what I would uh, go ahead, I would uh, deploy all of the services, HDFS, ER, and MapReduce 2 included, Zookeeper, Uzi, Hive, Hue, Scoop, HBase, Impala, Solar, Spark, and key value store indexer and then I can click on continue to go ahead to customize the role assignment so we could be able to customize this role assignments based on the new clusters and if assignments uh, if any assignments are made incorrectly such as assigning too many roles in a single host that can impact the performance of the service of course so here basically I need to choose that which could be the data nodes of HBase, the rest server thrift server region server I need to choose the HDFS name node uh, configuration if I am selecting multi-node configuration so here correspondingly I need to select that whichever the host I, I need for uh, the the head node and uh, so for example the name node selection and which nodes I want to give as a data node selection I need to select appropriately the NFS gateway secondary name node HTTPFS I need to select similarly for Hive for production clusters the gateway uh, node and uh, Hive Metastore server, web HCAT servers, etc. For Impala, similarly, I need to select uh, the ca Impala catalog server, Impala state so store servers, and Impala demo server. Uh, same for Uzi, it would be same as data node, single, it's a single node. For multi node, it would be different. Solar, also, we can select Spark. It would be we need to select the Spark history server and gateway server. For Scoop 2, we need to select the Scoop 2 server, Yearn, and Zookeeper. Uh, so it doesn't make any issues if we are selecting enough uh, CPU resources being available in a single node as well but for multi node of course we need to select uh, the appropriate nodes for being available for database setup we need to configure and test the database connection so if we are using custom databases we need to create the databases first according to the installation and configuring the external databases so I'm using for this demo an embedded database and the database type I'm selecting as PostgreSQL and let me go with the test connection yes the connection is okay so I can continue so it would back end it would to go ahead and deploy the databases, embedded databases on PostgreSQL. Finally, I need to check for the review for the changes, like for HDFS root directory, enable replications, indexing, data node data directory, and uh, data directories checkpoint, hive metastore server point, Uzi uh, data directory, zookeeper Znote, uh, HDFS data directory, scoop repository database host, scoop repository database type. I am selecting a Derby database type, scoop repository database user scoop repository database password so I can of course give a database password as well so I'm just giving it a password for scoop repository databases node manager local directories I need to specify it would be given default one you can of course change the data directory uh, for data uh, zookeeper server default var library zookeeper transaction log directory so once it's fine with me I can go ahead and continue
so in the final step it would go the cluster would start to set up and it would just being sending the command through to throw up the commands one by one to start up the services for deploying the client configuration so first step it would of course it would go ahead and deploy the client configuration setup and uh, then finally it would go ahead to start the initialize the services like it would start with zookeeper initialize and then starting the zookeeper services and one by one rest of all it would uh, start up the rest of 35 services So let's proceed with the deployment.